So I've been looking at putting together an army for Age of Fantasy, a fantasy war game written by One Page Rules, and I wanted to put together a set of knights and guards. Now, I know the system provides certain STLs for use in this army, but I wanted to make mine unique and different. Well, where to begin? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take one model that you like the look of and kitbash and alter it to let you build a whole new roster of units that look coherent on the table. First, we've got to find something that looks good to us. Starting as usual, I was browsing my mini factory or Thingiverse, and I stumbled upon this creator, Polly Grimm. They have these free models of a rather ornate looking knight with two poses, one with a giant sword and one with a sword and shield. Now I reached out to the creator and they were very kind enough to let me use their models in this video. But the actual models themselves look like they're licensed for remixing, so we should be in the clear there. My workflow involves using Adobe Medium, which is free software available for the Oculus Rift, but the same thing can be accomplished in Blender if you don't have a VR headset. The concept are all basically the same. Now the one main difference is Adobe Medium is a voxel sculpting program, which is a lot more intuitive for me to work with. Think of it like Minecraft, where you have little tiny pixels in 3D. This program lets us import models, so let's go ahead and do that. Now, if you just have a 3D model to start with like this, the first thing you need to do is separate out some parts. I do this by using the slice tool, or cloning the object and removing the parts I don't need. In this way, I made a separate part for the arms, legs, weapons, and head. Now I'm not actually sculpting anything here, I'm just using the tools in the program to remove material until I have isolated parts. Just following the contours of the existing model, cutting where a reasonable seam would go. Now each of these parts goes on a separate layer, and then I can manipulate them individually. Browsing Thingiverse or my mini factory, you can usually find lots of different weapons and shields for kit bashing as well. Here's one with a good selection of different weapons. I'll link it in the description as well. Once we have all these parts, it's time to come up with some poses. Now you can either do this as a whole figure, or to save some time, focus on the upper body, legs, and head separately. For the legs, getting two or three different poses should be enough to give variation. We can mirror the parts as well to double our options when printing. I actually used a whole new model for getting the leg poses, and copy and pasted the iconic boots over to give it consistency. Now for the chest, I decided on several different weapon loadouts. My knights in the game will be using long swords, crossbows, and shields, so I load up some different poses with these weapons. Each time I come up with an interesting pose that I like, I save it and export it to a file. For the heads, it's as simple as choosing one of each variation. So that these fit together nicely when assembling, I added a little key slot into the legs, round it over so that I can change the orientation, and then a similar sized hole in the torso. Now, the connection will be slightly stronger than just super glue alone. I also made some full body combinations. For long skinny objects, it's a good idea to give weapons multiple points of contact with the model, which will make it less likely to snap off on the table. Now, the files I'm exporting are pretty large and are also multi-part STLs. To make them reasonable files for printing, my workflow goes through two other free programs, which I'll cover. Mesh Mixer is the first one for making the object solid. In Mesh Mixer, I hit Close Cracks first, and then followed by Make Solid Operation, using Sharp Edge Preserve and increasing the quality to around 300. Play around with these values, you might get interesting results. And then I use the Inspector function to close any holes in the model. To reduce the file size further, I then run the models through Instant Meshes. This applies a remesh on the model and preserves most of the detail. I aim for around 90,000 vertices, and this produces a fairly sensible file size. From then, it's off to printing. I load these up into Lychee, and using the Magic's auto supports, I fill the build plate with as many parts as possible. This is where I mirror the chests and legs to give more variety and print both pairs. On to assembly. I make a pile of heads, legs, and bodies and start putting them together until I like the look of them. The beauty of this process is that I can actually run the exact same print again and come up with a whole new set of models just by the way I assemble them. If I wanted to go even further, I could chop off the arms and print them separately, which would give me even more combinations. Now, let me know in the comment section what paint scheme I could use for these guys. Also, take a look at the description, where I've put links to all the STLs and programs used in this video. Until next time, I'll see you around.